Hey everyone, it's December 13th, 2023. 30 years ago today, Nirvana played their legendary Live and Loud concert. In this video, I will be attempting to recreate Kurt Cobain's tone from that show, which took place in Seattle. This is hands down one of Nirvana's most well-known and most loved shows. From what I've seen, when people think of Nirvana Live, the first shows that come to mind are Live at the Paramount, Unplugged, and Live and Loud. This show happened in the midst of the In Utero tour. It is shorter than the standard sets we see on this tour because this was an MTV taping. Nirvana actually ended up playing longer than initially planned. The show was originally set to feature Pearl Jam as the co-headlining act, but they canceled Day Of due to vocalist Eddie Vedder having the flu. This meant that Nirvana was now the sole headliner and that they would now have an extended set. MTV originally wanted to film the show in New York, but Vedder wanted it to be a hometown show in Seattle. It took place in an industrial building called Pier 48 on the Puget Sound. Let's talk about what gear Kurt used that night, and then I will show what I am using and my settings. As a disclaimer, I am only recreating Kurt's tone, what you hear in the left channel for the entire show. Kurt and Pat's tones are different, so I just want to make it very clear that I'm not attempting to recreate the sound of both guitars going at once. I am just focusing on Kurt's. For guitars, Kurt primarily used Sky Stang 1, his custom shop Japanese Fender Mustang that was his main guitar in this era. He used this guitar on every song except for two. For Blue and Endless Nameless, he used a stock Fender Stratocaster. This was one of many stock strats that they carried on the tour for the sole purpose of being destroyed at the end of the night. I will be using my Sky Stang 1 replica. This is a Fender Kurt Cobain signature Mustang that I have modded over the years and very recently made some changes so it could reflect how the actual guitar is today. The changes are a custom pickguard made by Lomic Guitars. This is a prototype that he sent me for me to test out. These will be available for purchase in 2024. Keep an eye on his Instagram for updates. White single coil cover, white Seymour Duncan JB, and the damage that Kurt's JB has has been replicated on mine. Small post Nashville style tunomatic bridge, and cut white pickup switches. I was inspired to mod my Mustang this way after the time I spent with the actual Sky Stang 1. If you want to see my story with it and to see nearly every inch of the actual guitar analyzed and discussed in detail, check out my time with Kurt Cobain's actual guitar video. It will be linked here and in the video description. I don't have a stock Fender Strat. The closest that I have is actually my Squire Buddy Holly Strat build. I never thought I'd be featuring this guitar in a Nirvana tone video, but its stock Strat pickups did a decent job of getting the tone for Blue. I'll be using that for Blue and Endless Nameless. During the show, Kurt was out of tune for three songs. After Heart Shaped Box, he tuned his high E string on Sky Stang up a half step for Blue, but then switched to the Strat. After Blue, he goes back to Sky Stang, but the high E string is still a half step up during School, The Man Who Sold the World, and Come As You Are. You can kind of hear it in School, and it's most heard during Come As You Are. And you know that I gotta stay faithful to the show, so I will also be in this off tuning during those three songs. For pedals, Kurt used an Electroharmonics Polychorus and Small Clone, Sans Amp, and DoD FX69 Grunge Pedal. I will be using both my Polychorus and Echo Flanger clone, Small Clone, Sansam Classic, and a 1993 DoD FX69. My Polychorus is a mid 90s stereo reissue. These are amazing, but notorious for sounding different than the original late 80s Polychorus and Echo Flangers that Kurt used. I have always felt like this completely nailed the Heart Shaped Box solo live effect while getting really close but not perfect for Radio Friendly Unit Shifter and Scentless Apprentice. So I will only be using this on Heart Shape Box. For Radio Friendly and for Scentless, 
I will be using my Dandy Horse Echo Flanger clone. This is a near perfect clone of the original Polychorus and Echo Flangers. It's thought that Kurt used an Echo Flanger on the album while using the Polychorus live. The original run of these are actually the same exact pedal, just with different branding. This is the same Echo Flanger clone that both me and Kurt's guitar tech Ernie Bailey played the actual Sky Staying one through. I will be using my Sans Amp Classic for the majority of the distorted tones. When I first posted on Instagram about getting the DoD grunge pedal, a number of people commented and messaged me saying that either Kurt never actually owned one of these or that he never turned it on. This is false, as we can clearly see it on the Live and Loud DVD and hear it on three songs, School, The Man Who Sold the World, and The Last Note of All Apologies. I will be using my FX69 for those songs. These are my pedal settings. You'll also be seeing the pedals come up on the screen as they are being used. For amplification, Kurt used his Mesa Boogie Studio Preamp running through a Crest 4801 power amp to Marshall cabs. I am using my Fender Tone Master Twin Reverb. These are my settings. I record using the direct out on the back, which is why you won't see a mic in front of it. You'll now hear every riff that was played at this fan favorite show. For some songs, I used my loop pedal so I could play the solo. Let me know what you think. This tone video has been long requested by many, many people. I thought the 30th anniversary would be the perfect day to put this out. I appreciate your patience and hope you enjoy.
Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Nirvana Guitars and subscribe and check out my other Nirvana gear videos right here on YouTube.